and welcome to Blind Movie Club, the show where one of us picks a movie and forces the others to watch it immediately after dropping the title, followed by an in-depth open discussion. I'm your host, Jake, and with me, as always, goes Ian. Ian. And join us as we use my other equally as good co-host, Joquin. I only messed up one word. Joquin. That's awesome. This week is my pick, and these two have no idea what I'm going to pick for them, so with all that being said... Let's get into it. Do you have any theories? Uh, any good theories? Jake, I feel like you're going to do Yeah, a hit me with a year. A year? Well, I haven't decided yet. I feel... I'm between, I'm between two. I feel like you're going to pick a left field, left field pick uh, mm-hmm. animated. Okay, left field pick animated. The two that I'm thinking aren't animated. Well, uh, all right. They're both left I'm field, I'm going to say a director. Your ghost length was the most. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> he directed... Uh, best picture nominated movie a couple years ago. I know, I know who I'm talking about. I went your ghost and then sprawled on the keyboard. I got the right guy. I actually almost spelled his name completely correctly. The favorite. That's right. Yeah, yeah did do that. And he made the awesome. lobster. I haven't seen that. Which but is I, a the weird favorite movie. I have seen. It's fantastic. Yeah, I have my list of movies. I've been between two. Okay. And, mm, mm, mm. I think. Oh, okay, so I went. I was going to go with this one, but this one's more modern. I just did Climax, which is like three years old. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick one of the older of the two that I'm thinking. You guys ready for a foreign language film? Harakiri. It is. You got it. So we just watched Harakiri, and I'm very excited to talk about it. Um, I'm just going to lay out some... You know, because I'm the host of this week, I'm just going to lay out some things, some background context to it. Most of the background context isn't even fun facts about the movie. I just, it's just thoughts that I have about it. Okay. That's all right. I love the way that this movie builds and releases tension. Like, we've been talking about a lot with like, old yes, movies. Yes, like it was really Ben Hur. I, yeah. I always talk about the Dollars Trilogy, like, every single chance I can. Um, the shots linger in, after certain lines of dialogue, like, after Revelations, like, Oh, blah 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 is my whatever son. It's and you see the camera just slowly move and shift yeah. between people it, and zoom in sometimes. And there's a lot yeah. of that. They linger super long on that stuff. I think this is such an interesting way to structure the story and reveal exposition. Because at the start, it's just a dude coming to a place saying, "I'm gonna kill myself." That's it. We have no idea who he is, what he wants, what those people want, if they're even relevant, what whatever. You just walk right in, boom. And then as it progresses, it keeps switching between, like, what happens after and what happened before, after, before, after, before, after. after. And it keeps going down that direction. And I've seen other stories try and do that formula, and they become, like, confusing and bizarre and don't really keep you. But this, every single scene, past or present, advanced the story and told you more about what was happening. To the point where, like, the more you learn about these characters, the weirder the context becomes. And eventually... Much like the fight scenes where they're just two people standing and waiting and there's this tension and buildup and like all this kind of happens and then it's bing, 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 move out. And we're locked in a standstill because if either of them move forward and kill each other, the other has the advantage and can block it and kill them. So there's locked in the standstill, bing, bing, standstill. That's how the movie does it, as if it's a fight scene. Yes. Because the first hour and a half more so is action free in a samurai movie. Yeah. That is fucking incredible that the movie is as good as it is without yeah. any action for most of it. And then right at the end is where you get the flashback, killing that dude with that tension scene. Flashback, taking off that thing's head. Flashback, the duel in the the, the, the valley, the fields. And then you go back to the, the real time where it's one versus a million. And it's, again, more that standstill, bing, bing, standstill. Yeah. But the movie as a whole mirrors that action scene structure. Mm-hmm. Yes. So... I'm just, I'm in awe. Every time I watch this movie, I'm like more in awe at it and I praise it even more. Um, I had a top 10 list that I released on the channel like a year ago. As I've been watching the best pictures that keep shuffling, but this I hadn't watched before. Now I have. This is on my top 10 all time. I'm pretty sure this or Annie Ara 2018, between those two are my favorite foreign language films of all time. The second you said foreign language film, I actually guessed this one right. You did. As opposed yes, you did. to Joquins, where I said I did, mm-hmm. and then went, ah, I was close, <laughs> even though I wasn't that close. <laughs> yep. And before I pass it off to you guys, because I honestly want to hear what you guys have to say, I just want to point out the very first shot of the movie is of the armor. Yes. And the armor, you don't realize how significant it is until the end. Yeah. It is literally a shell of what the samurai used to be. 
which you can say metaphorically is what the samurai are in this movie. They just yes. they're this collection of ideas that are end up being completely false and proven false by the end, which you kept yes, pointing out. Yes, I kept pointing it, it out because it kept doing it, mm -hmm. and it's smart that it kept doing it. So the yeah. fact that the movie started and ended with that imagery, and then oh, he takes the armor yeah. and smashes it down in the fight scene. That's like symbolic of the entire movie. Yes. yes. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, it it's is. It's jazzed up. But yeah. yeah, so I want to point that stuff out. And then I just yeah. want to mention one more thing, if I could. Um, 18 minutes into the movie, when the initial samurai guy is like, hey, you know, we've had a bunch of bullshitters around here trying to get money from us, right, claiming suicide. I wrote down the quote, you may set your mind at ease. I came here with every intention of dying. Yep. He's right. Yeah. And he yeah. doesn't just mean by Harakiri, even though he does, which is an excellent payoff to the backstory of how the fact that his friend substituted for him on purpose to kill himself. Yes. So he wouldn't have to die. But he knew the entire time that he was never going to make it back home. Because no, he had no yeah. home to go back to. Yes. That was fantastic. So I just, I only have praise. I have no criticism. So pass it off to you guys. How do you feel? I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I knew this was heralded as one of the best, like, Japanese movies of all time. Well, by me, I mean. <laughs> uh, by multiple people, actually. Um, and general consensus, just, like, I, I've seen nothing but high praise and, like, mm -hmm god tier status for this movie um uh it definitely delivered it unfurls a story in such a slow burn yet perfectly paced interesting way mm -hmm. uh, with the tension like you said it was like a battle of words mm -hmm. in specific a samurai battle of words which was really just fucking awesome yeah, yeah. i love the use of flashback um Normally, I'm not a huge fan, but t in him telling the story, flashing back is the only way to make that interesting. Mm -hmm. Perfectly, perfectly used. Um, really good camera shots. Especially, I do want to point out that you were talking about like the lingering and um, the lingering on things after certain lines of dialogue. I like the dun dun after certain things mm -hmm. a lot, and I really like the shots of the people's haunted faces when they realize things. Yes, this movie has some shots that i've actually seen mm -hmm. prior um despite not seeing the whole movie i've seen still images of mm -hmm. certain faces like um hanshiro and motome specifically mm -hmm. of when they figure out when he figures out they're actually going to make him do it his face is like mortified yes he's like oh fuck and i love the fact that this movie plays that uh, we were talking during climax like for you know suicide scenes you have to earn that shit yes this movie earned 100 percent. yes because that's uh What's the name of the movie? Harakiri. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's the name of the film. It's like, not, I'm going to do this to shock you and gross you out. It's, yeah. wow, this mm -hmm. is like the plot. This is the code of honor. This is what we're talking about. And it's the breaking down of that code of honor because they're not following it anymore. And they aren't following it anymore. He goes, oh, you're a maniac. Kill him. Mm -hmm. And then continues not to follow it. He does. Absolutely. That's the entire ending of the movie. The whole point, the, the actions play out such to prove the main character right. Yep. And that, like, to me is like there's no more question because it was a kind of a question of, like, how crazy is he versus how crazy are they? Well, guess what? He was right the whole time. Yes. And yeah. after death, he's proven to be right. He was talking about the false honor because Kageyu was like, no, this is the honor. This is the honorable way to do it. This is the right way to do it. And he's like, oh, yeah? Boom, boom, boom. Hair, hair, hair. All right. They're sick. <laughs> they're all sick for three one days. of them <laughs> committed our carry yep he had the symbolism of honor mm -hmm. but when two of your three big dudes very very tense very well shot very well paced super well acted yep oh yeah and the, like the facial expressions alone notched that up to an 11 for me they you were see the pain wild. You yes see the pain in, in hanshiro's face i i called him captain depression at one point because he <laughs> just looks so haunted the entire time yep. and that's exactly the kind of look you want for that character yes yeah. it was incredible and honestly it's it's heat like so the, i i was the, there were a couple points where i was like oh that making joke like ah mm -hmm. But wouldn't it be funny? Like, he's talking to the dude, and he's like, have you talked about the proposal? I would like you to sell your daughter. And I was like, <laughs> I said that before. He said it. And he was like, no, you can't have my daughter. And I'm like, but bitch, <laughs> why? But, like, they play it's so well done. Yeah. Because then he goes, hey, I see, to, he tells um, Matome, I see you and Mio fucking like each other. Just do it. Like, I don't mm -hmm. care. I'm not selling my daughter. You, you guys should be together. I'm not a fucking dumbass. <laughs> and I'm not 
bullish and boorish. Like, mm-hmm. just just be happy. Every character's payoff is good and well deserved. Everyone gets what's coming to them. Yep. If they committed any transgressions, like it's funnily enough, the code of honor that Hanshiro is trying to say is false and stupid is the one that he follows and they don't. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a weird reverse twist of one thinks they're being honorable mm-hmm. and one's trying to dismantle the said system of honor while maintaining it. Yep. And he, you could argue he's the only one maintaining it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very wild. Mm-hmm. Especially insane. when you consider the fact that he was part of a rival, not rival, but like a different, a different kind of yeah. clan. Yeah. And yeah. that got dispersed when the new clan showed up. So the fact that like he's literally like the last foundation of that uh, rivaling kind of kind of clan is just yeah. that adds so much weight to what he's talking about. Yep. So there's some really good lines, like you said. The um the I do I come here with every intention to die. Mm-hmm. He also after revealing Motome uh, Motome sorry not mm-hmm. Motome Motome's reasoning for going there and doing that. He says, "Who can fathom the depths of another man's heart?" Mm-hmm. In like you didn't even question it, you didn't even ask, you didn't do anything, you just killed them. You just sent them in. It that weighs. It does. There's some really heavy emotional weight. Like the whole movie's heavy emotional weight. Mm-hmm. Very very well crafted, well put together. Everything about it. The soundtrack's heat. Mm-hmm. The cinematography's heat. I also love the soundtrack. Well, and the cinematography, but like I yeah. wrote down like the the what is that like the stringed instrument they use? Yes. Oh my god, I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head, so but great. it's the, the ding 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 ding. The intro song. Mm. Holy mama, oh, was that a banger? So good. Like. It, the movie slaps from the opening song to the closing shot. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's a Oni in the armor sandwich of they have the samurai armor with the um the Oni mask. Opening the film and closing the film. Symbolism. Really, really good. Like, really, really good symbolism. Because you see that and you go, oh, that means this. It's the Japanese honor, like the samurai honor, the Bushido, like all mm-hmm. of that kind of style. And then at the end of the film, you realize that it means that, but what does it actually mean in right. context of the film? And yep. It's really well placed. Mm-hmm. Jokin, how are you feeling about the movie? I feel pretty good. Um, yeah, you guys are kind of touching on a lot of the same points that I was going to say. But like after that hour point, that's when I got really invested in the movie. The first hour is kind of a slog, I'll okay. admit. But I, I mean, I disagree, but I, I see where you're coming from on that. First hour is kind of slog. Second hour, ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. Oh, when there, when the action starts coming, when the more of the emotional set pieces start happening, because yeah. that's mm-hmm. when that's really when we get to see like the downfall of his family. Yep. Everybody starts getting sick, mm-hmm. or and then you know like they tell the story of uh, Nijima. I can't remember the names. Um, Miho, Miho, Kingo, Motome, Hanshiro. Yep. And then Hanshiro. Kageyu is the asshole. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, the 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 son of his friend right. who stepped in and his daughter who ends up marrying the son and their kid. Yep. And there are tragic ends one yeah. after another. And it's such a sad story too, but it's it's very well written, but it's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and like you call him Captain Depression, it's only after you see those flashbacks that you're like, wow, I would be Captain Depression. It's not even that, like, it's just the way his eyes look, man. He was always haunted and sad and, like, run down. I mean, they weren't wrong at the end where they were describing him as, like, deranged. He yes. was. In a way, he was. He absolutely was. He was methodical and smart about it. Sure. But he was still, I would, I would say less deranged. And more had nothing left to lose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when he attacks, he, he kills four and maims eight. That's fantastic. When he takes down 12 people, effectively, they pull out these the 1620, 1630 guns from that century time. Hilarious. Like the earliest versions of guns you've ever seen in your life. And <laughs> hey, they work, they work. He could have ran. He could have grabbed some armor. He could have done something, but he kills himself ritualistically with Harakiri with his blade. Yep. He slices his thing open, and then he gets shot, executed properly, which is exactly what a ritualistic suicide is. <laughs> yep. So, oh my god, the fact that he performed that, even still fulfilling the entire point and theme of the movie prior, that he's been talking about himself, I came here to die, I'm going to follow through on killing myself, I'm not a, a charlatan, I'm not a fraud. Right. He, The fact that that even pays off, in a way we wouldn't expect, is awesome. 
and I love the fact that that big, tough, I'm so honorable emperor dude. Yeah, fucking Kageyu. Sat in a different room and let all of his dudes fight the battle. Well, he just sat and meditated and waited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got all oh, take care of it. Yeah. And then he covers everything up. Yep. Every beat detail. They Which, died of yeah. illness. Yep. We don't want any more of our men dying of illness. Make mm -hmm. sure they get treated right away. My favorite illness, being stabbed. Yep. <laughs> the illness of having horrible sword wounds all over your body. Yeah. You know, you don't want that one, bro. Yeah. It hurts. It's tough. The sword tough. fighting was really cool, too. It's uh, mm -hmm. I like the precision and slow burn of a Japanese um, oh, samurai yeah. fight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you're not going to see... I mean that that's that's how it's done. Mm, You're not yes. gonna be seeing like huge jumps and flips. That makes no sense. It's like right. fencing. Basically. Yes, and it's so interesting. Yeah. It's tactical instead of kill. Instead of it's not it's not made for like like visual effectiveness, you know. We're not yeah. watching like the prequels here where they're doing jumps and flips all over the fucking place. Mm -hmm. That has its place, sure. I still don't think it's as interesting though, mm -hmm. personally. As something like this, where it's slow, methodical, they plan out their movements, and yeah, it's just yeah. more interesting. I love stuff like that, especially when he was fighting all, like, 50 dudes, <laughs> and he's running around, and they're slicing at his joints. They're slicing at shoulders, elbows, knees, mm -hmm. because it's going to slow him down and make their tactics better, yep. his tactics worse. Right. It's the perfect plan. I love the line he has. It's I'm paraphrasing, but it's... Mastering sword without seeing battle is like mastering swimming on dry land. Yep. Like so that's why, yeah, that dude's a sword master, but he's never actually fought anybody. Whereas right. he has experience in he's also good at swords, obviously, but like he, he's also has experience in <laughs> I real excel battles. Sword. Yep. Yeah, excel at sword. He Just said it's sword. been like fifteen years, but I mm -hmm. did it. Yep. Yeah, he, he did. That, like, he won. In certain wins, certain contests. I would have liked to see how he won though. Like, yeah, obviously mm -hmm. his sword was cut in half. Mm -hmm. uh, he only he, had the short blade. The short you, blade. You, if you have the reach disadvantage in a samurai fight, you fucking lose most of the time. <laughs> like, but if I still, they're two evenly the... matched guys, yeah, I have two extra feet on you. you. You say that, but at the same time, he wasn't trying to go like he wasn't trying to slice him. He wasn't trying to kill him. He was, he was just trying, trying to cut get his hair top. off. Yeah. So basically, it's a short range battle, anyways, where the short would be mm -hmm. effective there. And then, no, all you have to do is. When you can't reach. You could also probably, like, I don't know, cut his hand so the sword falls out, and then when he's yeah. bending over, ow, just, you know. The fact that he got the sword cut in half, too, was fucking nice, man. <laughs> I think like, that's really... so cool. Watching the blade stab into the ground because yes. it's cut in half. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think Very what, dramatic. What really kind of sums up how and why the action is so good is, like, when Han Hanshiro, I wrote out his name, I don't know his name, Hanshiro is sneaking up on a samurai, they don't just, like, whip out their swords like you were saying just do 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 like the star wars prequels they're just jumping and dancing exactly <laughs> well what happens is like we follow him stalking him we see that the guy, bad guy notices we see him turn a corner his hand moves to the blade and the thumb clicks it out of the thing like that's what it's all about yes, yes. those scenes make you go oh boy i can't fucking wait it's about tension mm -hmm. it's not about style yep mm -hmm. it, it is about style because that is the style of how they fought but it's not about flair. Yes, absolutely. It's not like when I th when I say style in that sense, I mean like Michael Bay, big dumb <laughs> fuckery. I don't mean like you know. Yeah, Again, you, it's the same thing. Like I just said with the prequels. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You watch the prequels compared to something like the original trilogy and the, the lightsaber. lightsaber fights in the original trilogy are still cool, but like. Do you remember Obi Wan Darth Vader fight the limp? That's the one fight? bad no, one. No, <laughs> that's more tactical because they're feeling each other out trying that to true. get that. Sure, that's why what I where I was going with it. Mm -hmm. It feels bad and less interesting, but in all actuality, it's supposed to be mm -hmm. drawing off of that tension of them feeling each other out, the old partners, the everything. I think why people usually harp on that lightsaber scene, because I agree with you, that is a great lightsaber scene. Why people usually harp on that kind of stuff is because, well, the prequels were prequels. They came beforehand, so why did the masters get worse over time? Is they they didn't get worse, old. they got more tactile. Well, they got slower. <laughs> tactile does not mean worse. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I still love that's the scene. The no, that that just comes with time, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's the, obviously, the prequels came out yeah. after well, their the prequels. The reality of the situation is advancements in technology exactly, and choreography yeah. and stuff but like whatever even still 
Um, <laughs> You're not going to see Alan Gu- Guinness doing backflips, bro. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> not even then, let alone dead now. <laughs> but uh, no, and you said the dialogue was fire, which I also said earlier. The dialogue um, was fire. There was one, and I, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but there's a bit where he's like, oh, wh- when, when Motome is like, give me two days, you know, to just get my affairs in order he's like surely a man of your stature would not be trying to like rob us or anything by saying you want to commit harakiri so you get money so you're denied you honorable man you like that there's so much like it's like, cheeky that sardonic yeah yeah that cheeky like and they i know make what you're him up use to. the fucking bamboo sword too and the fact that he sold his actual swords and hanshiro was like i didn't even think of that mm-hmm. and he hates himself for it yeah yep oh my god because he clung to it he clung to it yeah. the whole time. He clung to the ideals of the past instead of trying to make the present what mm-hmm. it, what, what it could have been. Which you could argue is an old samurai way. Yes. Which kind of follows into his point why that's not a good thing to do. Yep. Yeah. So that all kind of ties back into the theme of the movie. Yeah. So, the theme of the movie is excellent. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely so, so well themed. So well done. Yep. Like the script is airtight. Super. You can so. throw this bitch in space and it'd be fine. <laughs> Uh, the visuals are beautiful. Yes. There are so many shots where somebody just walks through like a gazebo very slowly and the camera <laughs> stays on them with yep, like yep. the beams of the building passing through. Yeah. Like it's a little thing, but it's gorgeous to watch the I, perception. One of my favorite scenes to watch just visually is the scene where um, Hanshiro is fighting in the fields because they have the wind blowing on mm-hmm. the um, long grass. Yep. Ooh, I love the wind blowing on the long grass. So man. good. It, I love how it gets more intense as the fight goes on. And the wind blowing through the bamboo when they're walking down the path to get there. Mm-hmm. Sheesh. Wow, mm-hmm. it looks great. Yeah. Like, I love stuff like that. A lo- some of the modern day, mostly anime stuff, ha- is very reliant on um, being loud. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's a detriment for me because it's overacted most of the time. Because you got to keep the you got to keep the people's attention. You know. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not constantly screaming in their face every three seconds, yeah. you're gonna pull a joke when you're gonna fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like certain things. Certain things are have like mixes. Mm-hmm. That's what real life is. Is so it's supposed to be like that. Of like people get louder and quieter. Yeah. Um. It was epic. And made points without any of that. This movie is very intelligent. There's a couple cuts that I think are a little too jarring. I love the cuts, though. There are a couple that are uh, too soon or too jarring, but I like. I really like the jarring cut when he closes the hand fan, mm-hmm. the, yep. and it cuts with the noise. Yes, that's, that's an favorite excellent thing. cut. It's so good. But there's one uh, two-ish flashback parts before that mm-hmm. where it just like cuts back and i'm like oh i would have liked to see something a little bit more there but that's like a nitpick thing mm-hmm. yeah like i went on a kick this is like a six months ago i went on like a kick of like i have a bunch of samurai movie recommendations and i haven't really seen a lot of them so i'm just gonna sit down and watch them all and i watched you know things like the samurai trilogy it's just called the samurai trilogy from like 60 years ago or so whatever maybe longer um and other samurai movies like that are very melodramatic mm-hmm. and they're like I, look they're, they can be good movies do not get me wrong i'm not shitting on the formula at all but like this is so different than any other samurai movie i've ever seen seven samurai is really good seven it? samurai is great but it is still just a tried and true action movie it's the template for one yes obviously it's laid the foundation for stuff like avengers and bugs life you know <laughs> but like <laughs> it does it follows the same exact joke we're gonna have to watch seven samurai bro it, it it's is bugs life. It's bugs life. It's straight up bugs life. <laughs> but um, something like this is just mm-hmm. so different, and it's basically like giving the middle finger to the samurai movie genre, while yes. also being the best one in that genre at the same time. So it is phenomenal. Like I'm not even gonna disagree with yeah. you. So yeah, I mean, if I had to go out of tens, I mean, you already know this is on my top ten of all time. So three out of ten. I uh, know. <laughs> so it's a perfect score for me. So I'm also thinking the same as you. Really? I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah, I genuinely. No matter what minor nitpicks I have, it gets completely washed over by everything's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, there's one or two harsh cuts. Okay, but the rest of the movie is edited, like, so well. Yeah. Or if I'm like, oh, there's a sound that's stupid. All right, but the whole soundtrack and the sound editing and the wind and everything else is phenomenal. Like, it's nitpick versus amazing. Yeah. Like, I can't. I'm not even going to be like, oh, any of the... No, all the acting. Good. Mm -hmm. Like... (laughs) Just a very amazing movie that I have heard 
only good things about and seen only good things about from multiple people and yeah. online and just in general. Like, it's heralded as one of the best Japanese films of all time. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I think it is. Just straight up is. Uh, I I will not disagree that mm-hmm. it possibly could be. I, I like movies like Seven Samurai, obviously, as well. Mm-hmm. A lot longer. Movies are three and a half hours long. Yeah. <laughs> that was a long film. Yeah, this one's like barely two over two. 12 two twelve or something. Yep. Which felt short for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Yeah, it I just, paced. I, it I wouldn't paced, touch the structure of pacing this movie at all. It paced super well, especially in the latter half. That The pacing in the latter mm-hmm. half is like, it's all those quick feel strikes. Mm-hmm. That we're feeling like, yeah, and it backs off a little bit, but it's perfectly paid. It's so good. Joe, can I take this as your first ever eleven out of ten? Uh, oh, absolutely. I'm actually <laughs> thinking a twelve out of ten. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, let's go. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking it, really good movie. Mm-hmm. Absolutely solid movie. Not a lot of problems. Eight out of ten. Okay. Hey, eight. it's great. So now for my next pick, I'm not gonna. I don't have it picked. I was gonna That's say. Fine. I was gonna say a fake joke movie. I'm picking. I'm picking Ratatouille, baby. No, because well, you got it wrong last time. I got it wrong last time. So now I have to manifest it to be correct. No, that was a, a better one. Definitely. I told you to pick a better movie. You picked a better movie. You did pick a better Damn movie. Damn right. A hundred percent. Because this one was now good. Now it's on to Ian to pick a good movie this time. Hey, Joe Gwen, This I re- round. I really tried last time. Did you? I didn't know if it was gonna be bad or not. I picked it because it was interesting. Yeah. What acting experience? <laughs> one uh, person. She was in Hitchcock movies. I looked. Roar One. Was, Roar was fascinating. All right. Yeah. I will give him that. Like, that was... I picked something that was interesting to talk about. I didn't necessarily know if it was good or bad. Sure. But mm-hmm. interesting. Well, we're going to find out next time, though, yeah. exactly what that is. So see you guys then. See ya.